the politics clearly is an important part of what you're doing right now, and the threat environment is clear for all to see. Let's start off and deal with kind of what's happening here in Europe in this, in this um, bailiwick. There is a clear pressure coming from the United States, from Donald Trump, the President of the United States, for Europe to spend more on defence. Are you seeing any evidence that that's starting to have an effect, that actually Europe's saying, yeah, maybe we do need to spend some more and we need to spend it with Raytheon? Yeah, so one of the things I would tell you, Guy, um, we've seen an uptick in, in interest in our capabilities. Uh, we're world's leader in missile defense, uh, cybersecurity, training, infrastructure protection, border security, uh, precision guided munitions. Uh, and we're seeing demand for that capability here in Europe. Uh, most notably, um, a demand for capabilities that we've been providing for many years. Recently, we just announced uh, an award of some $600 million uh, for the restart of the Standard Missile Program, which is a ship-based yep. uh, missile defense, uh, air breathing and missile defense uh, system, um, providing uh, the capabilities, for example, to the Netherlands uh, here in Europe, uh, as well as uh, to Japan, Korea, and Australia. Uh, we see an uptick in that demand. Um, we see uh, a interest uh, in continuing to upgrade the systems that they have, uh, most notably uh, here in, in Germany, uh, where the Germans are asking to upgrade Patriot. And in addition to that, we're seeing countries uh, having a renewed interest in our capabilities in missile defense, for example, Sweden and Romania, who are now asking for uh, information and proposals around our capability. So do you think part of that, part of that is the, the pressure coming from Washington? Presumably part of that is the pressure coming from Moscow, I, the, the sort of the combination of all of these factors coming together? Right. So our job is to make sure that we provide uh, meaningful, cost-effective solutions that meet their needs. Um, our understanding and, and from our customers, it's about demands. It's about yep. threats. And the, they need the ability to protect their sovereign, uh, sovereignty. I, it, what has been fascinating is to watch the, the financial markets re-rate the defense sector. So there's been a massive re-rating that's taken place. There is an expectation that actually defense is going to be a much sort of uh, more interesting place to be putting your money to work. And part of that's come about from the pressure that we've seen, and part of that's come about as a result of some of the numbers you've just been talking about. But there's also the pressure in, there's also the story in the United States. The president has made it very clear that he is going to be focusing on spending money in the defense space. I, I, again, just give me a sense of what that means on the ground in terms of what you're actually doing, whether you're, not, whether you're seeing an effect of that. Is that something you think the president is actually going to deliver upon? Well, it's clear uh, from the president's priorities um, that uh, they need capabilities with respect to protecting the homeland, of defeating ISIS, of improving the infrastructure and protection of, uh, of uh, the uh, country from cyber attacks. Uh, and those, those demands uh, align completely with our core co competencies and capabilities as a company. So we see uh, significant um, um, upside potential for us, not only domestically but internationally, yep. because as you remarked, uh, we see uh, the very same kinds of demands uh, in the um, uh, global marketplace. Um, you know, if I just talk about cyber alone, um, you know, many people know the fact that we're a world leader in missile defense. But the fact is we're also a world leader in cyber defense. We're the world's largest cyber solutions provider. Yep. Uh, and, and I'll tell you, one of the proof points of that domestically with respect to a question on demand for our capabilities is an award we just got on Domino, which is to uh, a cybersecurity contract to uh, protect .gov, supporting some 100 agencies and departments, a program over the course of five years worth some $1 billion. And then we see similar demands uh, here in Europe. Uh, and we think there are significant opportunities to not only grow in the pure defense sector, but also in the commercial marketplace. Just, I, how big could that market become? I, we, in the UK, we just experienced outages in the NHS. Um, the, the more we are connected, the more we are vulnerable. And so the fact is everything is at risk, and we're taking the time to provide solutions that not only protect and defend networks, but also protect and defend products. We have the wherewithal to look at things that are already currently de uh, deployed, do assessments around their vulnerabilities, and put in place solutions uh, in the combinations of products uh, and capabilities to protect them and make them, those systems and networks resilient. Just to come back to the way that the financial markets kind of rate you, the financial markets have a pretty high rating on you, on, on your competitors at the moment. But, but do you think that they're underestimating the potential that, for instance, a part of the business like cyber can deliver? I, it, you, as you say, you've only got to look around and appreciate the connectivity that exists out there. And you've had a series of shocks. I, 
there, there are plenty of them, but the WannaCry kind of was, was, was the latest one. Again, I, do you think we're still underestimating the potential that that, that business can deliver upon? So um, we are very uh, positive with respect to the outlook, uh, with respect to growth. Uh, we've been focused on growth, uh, and you know that we've been doing the hard work internationally and additional domestic, and we see opportunities for growth in our core markets, missile defense, uh, cybersecurity, um, precision-guided munitions. All of those capabilities are, our customers are looking for. Yeah, but I'm just wondering kind of where the kind of... Where does it end? Where, no, no. Where, where does the biggest portion of the business come from? Where, where when you're kind of when you, you when you look strategically out of the business and you're and you're thinking, right, we have capability here. There's clearly a need for missile defence. That's going to be something that we can understand. But if you have fully got your arms around or uh, your mind around kind of how big the cyber side of things is going to be, because right. so we, because we, that just seems to be that, that the, the kind of the capability there just seems to be massive. Right. So I would tell you that our cyber business is probably the fastest growing element of our part of our portfolio. It's a double-digit growth. Yep. Uh, and we see the potential for even faster growth. The more um, people become aware of the vulnerabilities of the, the networks and the, and the products that they have, the more they, they seek our advice and counsel. And, and our job is fundamentally to knit together the capabilities we have along with the demands our customers have and give them the solutions they need. We're very, very optimistic about the uh, potential for a continued growth, not only in our core defense markets, but also in, in the cyberspace. Both in the commercial sector as well as in the defense arena.